Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for September 3rd, 2022 from the Ashland Hawkwatch. The weather ended up being pretty nice again today. It was cloudy when I woke up in the morning, but then throughout the morning, uh, it went from mostly cloudy to mostly sunny by midday. And then later in the day, there were more cumulus clouds starting to build and it became more cloudy again. But overall, just a really nice day and a bit on the warm side. The past few days I had been hearing the chip notes of blue grosbeaks and I was finally able to track one down today. And blue grosbeak is a species that I like because the other places that I live throughout the year we don't have blue grosbeaks. So it was nice to track one down and really they won't be staying around here much longer either. So definitely always a treat for me to see. This house wren posed nicely on one of our memorial benches. Here we have a young eastern bluebird flying over. We only had one broad-winged hawk today, and it was this adult that must have roosted somewhere nearby, and it came and circled for a while and went higher and higher and higher, and then glided off to continue its migration. We had a nice look at this female American kestrel, and we know it's a female because of the vertical streaking on the breast. At one point mid-morning, we had a bunch of juvenile red-shouldered hawks and red-tailed hawks all chasing each other and soaring around and playing. So here we have a red-shouldered hawk on the left being chased by a red-tailed hawk, and it gives us a good chance to compare the two. So we see that the red-shouldered hawk looks a little bit skinnier, whereas the red-tailed hawk slightly bigger, a little more bulky. And I would say there's a bit of a color difference as well. The red tail looks more pale overall, whereas the red shoulder has more brownish tones. If we look at the wingtips, we see that the red-shouldered hawk has the translucent crescents near the wingtips, whereas the juvenile red tail has uh, translucent windows, which is a good field mark to look for when they're at high altitude and you can't see much else. And the other thing that really stands out to me is the upper breast. So on the red tail, we see that it has the belly band and then it's really clean on the upper breast, whereas on the red shoulder, the streaking, if you want to call it that, it's kind of like dotting, really. It goes all the way from the upper breast down to the belly. So really nice comparison shot just to uh, get a feel for how these two species are similar but different. And here we have another look at the same two birds. And from this angle and this lighting, let's see what the similarities and differences are. One thing that stands out to me on the red shoulder is how much darker these wingtips are compared to the red tail. On the red tail, you can certainly tell it's darker near the wingtip, but it's not as bold. And also the uh, streaking on the tail seems a little bit more bold on the red shouldered as well. And again, we can see the difference in the streaking on the underside. And we can see how the red shouldered has these brown tones throughout these covert feathers. And if we look at the red tail, we of course see those dark patagial bars that all ages of red tail show. but. Of course, we do not see those on the red-shouldered hawk. Here we have three bobolinks that were part of a larger group. And bobolinks can be a little tricky to identify sometimes because they can look very similar to cedar waxwings just because they're similar in color. But the one thing that stands out about the bobolinks is that they tend to fly in looser groups than the waxwings. The waxwings, when they fly in a group, they're very close together, very tight group. The bobolinks are just more spaced out. So that was one reason that we took a closer look at these birds. Also, if we take a look at the tail, on the bobolinks, they kind of have these spiky looking tails, almost like there's some points to it. That's a bit different than we see on the cedar waxwings where it's more of a flat edge at the tip of the tail and it's got the, usually a yellow tip of the tail or occasionally red. Here's a common nighthawk and Nighthawks are more commonly seen at dusk and dawn, but we do occasionally see them flying around in the middle of the day, sometimes even in quite large groups, especially on cloudy days. So we're still in the peak nighthawk migration time, so it's not too uncommon to see them during the day. Here's another look at a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. We go over those field marks again. Remember, the pale crescents near the wingtips are the first thing that really stands out. Also, the wingtips are made up of five feathers, one, two, three, four, five, which gives the wingtip a bit more of a squared off or blunt look, especially compared to the similar broad-winged hawk, which only has four feathers at the wingtip, giving it a more pointed look. We also see that kind of uh, 
just warm brownish tones throughout the underside, maybe not as pale as the juvenile red tails. And uh, we also see that the streaking goes all the way from the upper breast down to the belly, rather than having just a belly band through the middle like we see on the red tails. Here we have an immature bald eagle, and I think this might be a second year bird. We can see that it's showing signs of molt. It looks like there's some longer retained juvenile feathers and maybe a white underside to the body. I noticed this shorebird flying over and quickly snapped some photos, and it turned out to be a solitary sandpiper. Here's a topside view of a juvenile red-shouldered hawk, and I wanted to include this just to show that you can see the pale crescents on the top side really well as well. I love this photo. There's just something really aesthetically pleasing about seeing an osprey that's up super high in this really lanky and bent M-shaped posture. I don't know. I think it's just really cool. Um, especially these early season days, you're not seeing much. You're just scanning the sky and then you pick out this little dot way up high that's kind of got that classic distinctive osprey shape to it. Here we have a bald eagle that's not quite a full adult yet, but he's getting there. You can see he's still got some white where he should be dark and he's still got a little bit of dark where he should be white at the tip of the tail here but probably next year he'll look like a full adult and here's another osprey in that classic glide posture here we have a juvenile cooper's hawk so this is pretty classic cooper's hawk pose just uh, really straight wings long tail of course lets us know it's in the exhibitor genus but we see that it's got a very curved tip to the tail or rounded tip to the tail with a bold white tip and we can see that the breast has streaking on the upper breast and not much down here on the belly this is just classic juvenile cooper's hawk here's a look at an osprey and a soar so we see when they're soaring they don't have those really crooked wings they hold them out straight but just really lanky classic uh, black and white contrast underneath very distinctive bird here's another look at a cooper's hawk and again just those really straight wings the head clearly sticks out in front fairly large and it's got that big rounded tip to the tail with the bold white tip here's one that i think everyone knows this is an adult bald eagle and if we take a look at the ebird checklist today 56 species and as always i'll put a link to it if you want to check it out with all of the photos. And looking at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had nine ospreys, four bald eagles, one cooper's hawk, one broad-winged hawk, two American kestrels, and the first merlin of the season, which was too distant to photograph, for a total of 18 migrants today. And I also had some migrant warblers in the morning, which were northern parilla and magnolia warbler. If we take a look at the frontal map for tomorrow morning, we see that this cold front has kind of come across but stayed well north of us. Um, the high pressure systems are moving off the coast and we have some low pressure coming in, bringing a lot of rain with it over the next few days. And looking at the forecast for the Ashland Hawk Watch, tomorrow we're looking at cloudy skies early, then partly cloudy, high in the upper 80s, and light south-southwest winds. So if the sun's out in the afternoon with those light winds, we might have some migration. Shouldn't be the worst day ever. Taking a look at Monday, cloudy in the morning with isolated thunderstorms later, high in the mid-80s, and winds south at 5 to 10. Not particularly good conditions, especially early in the season. Wouldn't expect to see a ton. Tuesday, cloudy with showers, high around 75, and light east-northeast winds. So again, would expect pretty light migration as we're still in the early part of the season, but over the next few weeks, everything will start to pick up. All right, that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. And if you like this content, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of these daily updates. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.